Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Over Analyzes. I have no earth shaking revelations for you today. There is not a single creepy unreality peeing out from behind a facade of normality in this episode. This is just a tidy little basket of Easter eggs that the rest of the fandom seems to have missed. It is in the opening scenes of the first two episodes that they show up. In the first place, we are introduced to five. Fives in the Knives Senior's van. Pappy Knives is wrapped in tats and, and is a bull of a man with a Spanish accent. Abuela Knives is a tiny little Asian woman with remarkable agility and a CD titled Abuela Sick Mix. As she slides it into the CD player, dating the tra truck, it's very, very old in this five minutes in the future world, you can see the skull and the heavy metal markings that match Pappy Knives' tats as the acceptable cartoon level heavy metal begins to play. The music covers the scene transition and we suddenly find ourselves in Nico's room as the camera pans over the orderly neatness of Lexi's side of the room and the, <laughs> let's be generous, the creative chaos of Miko's side of the room. The camera shows posters of mecha suits and a blurry carry-on and something or other poster. The shelves are covered with old games and littered with geek references. There are more posters scattered over the walls. The camera shows everything and focuses on nothing. That is, until it pans around behind Miko to focus on her two largest posters. One says Magic Metal and shows a massive guitarist rocking out on an, ele on an electric guitar. He has a bull's head. The style of this poster suggests a Mexican or Spanish, possibly Portuguese culture behind the poster. The in-universe realistic bull's head could easily have been a projection stage effect. So this makes sense. The camera pans again and shows another poster clearly. This one is of a tiny female metal star in a Japanese schoolgirl's uniform. She is posed and her face is pale white with black eyes and blue hair. Common colors for a Japanese pop metal rock star. Her poster says, Kiss Kiss Outrageous. The K-I-S-S -S in each kiss is capitalized just like the band Kiss, again with the metal theme. The camera really focuses on these two posters most several times, setting them apart from the rest of the room, singling them out to the point that I noted it on the first viewing as something odd. I thought it was serving two common purposes at the time. They were a mark of Miko's interest, establishing her character. She was a girl who liked heavy metal music. As if the heavy metal Death's Head character singing her praises on the screen of her Guitar Hero game wasn't clear enough. It was also a reference to Kiss and to the Japanese manga fixation on KISS that was re a real, if small, phenomenon culturally. And the Magic Metal poster was a reference to the habit of the 90s and aughts of girls putting beefcake posters of singers up on their walls. Even as mundane a source as the newspaper co uh, daily comic strip Baby Blues did a strip on the beefcake posters of heavy metal singers from years ago. Then, on my fifth, or was it sixth watching, I noticed something. And I question, that's when I started to question whether I might be able to, you know, uh, sue Dan Milano for ruining my sleep. But anyway, I noticed something. The odd heavy metal thread didn't end with Miko's room and Five's grandparents. It continued right into the Bailey Hanobi store, right down to the glitch tech level. And who, the bloody heck, was holding the other end of that thread in their very own in their hand. It was our very own love to hate him, looks so much like Abuela Knives that he is basically her male counterpart, the top glitch tech of the Hanobi Bailey store, Mitch Williams. In episode two, when Phil ushers five and Miko into the back of the store, the manager takes the time to snarl out or orders at the older glitch techs lounging around the training and break area. Zahara and is spotting Hanish while he target practices. The blue-haired girl whose name we haven't figured out yet is doing that thing where you play with a ball and pretend you're doing it for reflex training, but you're actually just playing with a ball. And Mitch Williams is watching a hologram projected on his gauntlet. He is watching the performance of the lead female from the Kiss Kiss Outrageous Pope, sir. Talk about your twisted tropes. In general, the cool 19-year-olds do not consume the media of 16-year-olds. You saw how much Miko's own sister, much closer to her in age and with a, dedica and with a dedicated sisterly love for her sister, re revolted from sharing any of Miko's interests, especially her enthusiastic ones. And heavy metal is an enthusiastic interest, or it's not an interest at all. So, this is because the 19-year-old, especially, is an adult, but just barely adult. The 19-year-old has to prove to the world that they're an adult. 
So most 19 year olds conscientiously reject the media of their slightly younger siblings and friends. This is a near universal concept. And it's very, very odd to see M M Mitch here sharing Miko's taste. If this kiss kiss outrageous girl was the newest pop sensation, the idol of Miko's generation, a tough guy character like Mitch, who is so concerned with his reputation, would almost certainly have had nothing to do with her. Again, this is nearly a fundamental law of the universe. The newly minted adults have to prove their place, have to prove their toughness, and so that most of them reject this. This is this was commented on by C.S. Lewis with one of his quotes that I'm not uh, that, that people have to be old enough to enjoy fairy tales again. I believe the exact comment was. Or maybe it was George MacDonald. One of the old one of the old fiction writers of past centuries noted in in one of their quotes that people were not old enough for fairy tales, but they would be old enough for fairy tales again. Nineteen year olds are not old enough for fairy tales, and they're definitely not old enough to really enjoy the pop metal that springs up right after their time. So here, here we have Mitch who should have been sneering at Miko's favorite band the same way he mocks the rest of blueberry culture, but instead he is watching it openly on a holographic projection in the middle of the base with the closest thing to a real smile on his face that I think I've ever seen. He's not just enjoying himself, he's enjoying himself in a casual and relaxed manner. Now, there is one glaring exception to the rule of nature that a three-year divide separates the media of the young adults from the media of the young, like an impassable barrier. The classics. Go to any school. If someone is paying the Beatles, Johnny Cash, or even the OG Kiss band themselves, then the young, the, then the young and the young adults alike can enjoy them. The Beatles bridge generations. Johnny Cash bridges generations. You, if if a group of teenagers from 19 to 13 is listening to one music contentedly, you know it's going to be one of the classics. So he, something that they got from their parents or even their grandparents. So here, my friends, is the theory. Okay, Papi Knives, Fives Abuelo, is the lead, was the lead guitarist singer for Magic Metal. Like many a Spaniard performer before him, he proudly wore the head of El Toro with honor. Until the day that he fell helplessly in love with the lead singer for Kiss Kiss Outrageous. Her, his black eyes met... Her, her, her black eyes across the stage and they ran away together to start a happy domestic life as the owners of a food truck. Along came Knives Jr. and then Five. Thing was, their music was good. It was the real deal. They had skill and solid songs to back up their showmanship and their abandonment of the stage left the fans heartbroken. So the fandom grew even as it aged. Parents passed down music videos to their children and the urban legend of Magic Metal and Kiss Kiss Outrageous was passed on. Now, this still doesn't explain why Mitch mysteriously looks like Abuela, but it would explain why he and Miko would share a fandom so calmly, and it will add an odd dynamic to the relationship when Mitch finds out about who Five's grandparents are. So, what do you think, my wonderful viewers? Am I way off base, or was Abuela Knives a Japanese pop metal star in her youth? Leave a like below if you agree, and a comment shredding me like the, an electric guitar if you disagree. Check out my Teespring store for some weird human merch, and hit that subscribe button. Peace out, my wonderful